Savage Life family, whenever I see a whale or an institutional investor try to claim some FUD or push some bad agenda towards cryptocurrency or Bitcoin, I say it's a new attempt for a all-time high. Now, the technicals do indicate that in the short term, and we'll get to that. But first, let's talk about Warren Buffett here. Now, he remains very opposed to cryptocurrency, famously calling Bitcoin a rat poison squared and dismissing it as a viable investment option. His long term collaborator, Charlie Munger, shares his skepticism labeling cryptocurrency trading as just dementia. Despite the growing acceptance of Bitcoin, Buffett maintains his grim outlook, predicting a bad ending for cryptocurrencies. He contrasts this with investments in tangible assets like farmland, which he sees as contributing directly to the economy. Buffett's successful investment in farmland underscores his belief in tangible assets when he considers them, of course, more reliable than cryptocurrencies. At the 2022 Berkshire Hathaway annual shareholder meeting, he even stated that he wouldn't buy all the Bitcoin in the world for $25. Now, that is just absolutely insane. He clearly just doesn't understand the technology of Bitcoin. Neither does his partner, Charlie Monger, understand the actual technology behind Bitcoin. They just they get his digital money and poof, it could just disappear at the end of the day. And that is how we know we are still early in the field. Now, people with his current mindset who have billions of dollars invested on a multitude of assets that actually depend on the actual fiat which is affected by inflation, of course he's going to oppose any other currency that is affecting his investment. So he's going to be against it no matter what he believes the technology is. But I truly believe he hasn't really done his research deep into Bitcoin or the overall cryptocurrency market. And he is just behind on the date and age. It's like back in the days when your grandpa or grandparents didn't believe in the internet technology and look at it now. Internets did have a boom for a certain amount of time and then it dumped massively. But every single day, what do we do? We use the internet. We need internet to function in this day and age. So what do you guys think about Warren Buffett? Because it is absolutely ridiculous. And if you are new in the field, please don't be alarmed or afraid of or institutional money like Berkshire Hathaway and Warren Buffett when he says that he wouldn't pay so much for Bitcoin or cryptocurrency because ultimately he will just be end up behind. We see the progress that Bitcoin is making and we see the countries that are adopting Bitcoin and ultimately cryptocurrency. So it is not going anywhere anytime soon. That's not to say we're going to be seeing some 10, 20, 30 percent dumps in a day, maybe in a week. So don't be alarmed by that. That's just buying opportunities if you truly believe in the technology. So we have here federal Jerome Powell assured lawmakers during a Senate hearing that the Fed has no plans to develop a CBDC. Could he be telling the truth or is it probably something behind the scenes that he's trying to work on? So that would allow government surveillance on people's transactions. Powell emphasized that the Fed is far from recommending or adopting a digital dollar and would involve the banking system in managing accounts if such a currency were ever considered. Now he stressed that the U.S. opposes a system like China's where the government can track user activity despite concerns raised by Republican politicians, including Donald Trump's government surveillance through CBDCs. Powell reiterated that any decision to pursue a digital dollar would require specific authorization from Congress and the White House. So for those of you who believe, well, wouldn't a digital currency be moving cryptocurrency forward because it is digital money? Well, no, it would give them a lot more control. Just imagine that the government knows every single transaction that they uh, that you are making. Uh, let's say you don't pay your taxes for one year. They freeze all the money on your digital account because they have absolutely control. Let's say you're jaywalking one day and you don't pay the ticket. They take it automatically from your account. That's the sort of power that they will have if they do have a CBDC and we all convert towards that. Now, the difference between that and cryptocurrency is that they don't really have control over cryptocurrency. Yes, they could track it to a certain extent, but there are absolute ways where as long as you have your keys, you're able to send it whenever you want, wherever you want, anytime you want. And there's no one that could go into your wallets and freeze it unless 
you do something ridiculous like give away your keys and you do that by leaving your cryptocurrencies on, ex on an exchange or giving someone access to your keys. Now, Nayib Bukel, if you guys didn't know, is the president of El Salvador. Peter Schiff is a huge bull on gold. He loves gold. He hates cryptocurrency with a passion. He believes it's going to zero. He tells people to talk about those profits or he tells Bukel to talk about those profits after you sell and realize them. Now, this is because several years ago, Bukel became in incredibly bullish on Bitcoin for his country and he was dipping into the treasury of El Salvador to buy Bitcoin. At a certain point in time, he was buying one Bitcoin a day when Bitcoin was beneath $20,000 price points. People were calling him an absolute fool for doing that. And now look at him now. He has 3x pretty much the country's treasury and we are seeing like a third world country turning into a first world country very soon. So... For an example, at 2011, gold was at 1900. He was incredibly bullish. Buy gold. You're a fool if you don't buy gold. 2024, 13 years later, that investment has gone up $100 from 1900 to $2,000, where Bitcoin from $1 in 2011 has gone up to $64,000. He should be crying right now, in all honesty. Imagine if he just would have invested a slight percentage of his gold portfolios in gold. And another funny thing is he talks about talk about those profits after you sell and realize them. He has not sold or realized any of his gold profits. So it seems he's holding quite the bag at the moment. So Naib Bukel is right to tell him cry harder. He is an amazing president, I believe. There is a huge reduction of crime rate in El Salvador as well. If you guys haven't really researched about it, take a look. He is shutting the country down putting everybody in prison who is a criminal, which is causing actual justice because there was massive amounts of cartels and gangs there. So not only is he flourishing on the monetary side, he's also flourishing on the countryside, keeping it safe. So taking a look at some technicals for Bitcoin, now the reason I say Bitcoin is reattempting to make its all-time highs is because we have a resistance level here at 69,000, which is the all-time high that Bitcoin has made, the all-time high that Bitcoin has tried to break. But there is a problem. And the problem is the amount of sell orders that people have at the $69,000 price point level, which is the resistance. So as soon as it hits 69000 so many traders, millions upon millions of dollars, are automatic, ready to be sold right there for profits to be taken. Now, it's going to be very dangerous for those traders. If Bitcoin has a blow off top, it continues to rise up and they can become liquidated. But that won't happen for the individuals who have automatic sell orders. So what are we seeing here? It seems that the bears have a tactic. The tactic has been working for several days now, which is causing us to dip every time we try to hit that all time high. So as you see this candlestick here, it raises for a little couple of seconds drops back down, raises for a little couple of seconds, drops back down. Those are the automatic sell orders. And how do we surpass those automatic sell orders? Well, we're pretty, pretty close to doing so. We have to maintain our support. And that's been happening for several days now, since around the 3rd of March, we've been above the $63,000 price point levels and we've been healthily growing at a slow and steady rate. A lot of you guys want Bitcoin to just jump up massively certain percentages in a day. And yes, I believe that's going to happen very soon, but you don't want to have it. You don't want that to happen before the having event because then we start seeing some massive drops. We made drop 40% after increasing 30% because the supply shock is not there at the moment. But these ETFs are making it very possible for new all-time highs to be reached before the having event even takes place. So that is incredibly bullish so far. Ultimately, there's lots of skepticism that the Bitcoin market is going to be seeing a drop very soon. Reason being, the fear and greed is at an all-time high, pretty much at these 80, 180 levels. And when there is extreme greed, there is going to be lots of profit taking off the table, which is going to cause a dump. And people are going to be seen as exit liquidities. Now, 
I believe the first ones to experience that are going to be seeing these meme coins. They're very good to get some profits in the short term. But if you become exit liquidity, you can lose all those profits in an instant. And I don't want you to be that individual there. So I would avoid these meme coins here unless you know absolutely what you are doing. And I hope you have some stop losses in place and you're not trading with very, very high leverage because that's how you can get burned very quickly using these meme coins here to try to get rich quick. Now for these Ethereum classic investors, we just broke that resistance level that I had mentioned, but the reason why it's struggling to get past is because Bitcoin is at that same level of resistance and those stop orders are incredibly heavy. So it's preventing us from moving forward. So let's take a look what our next resistance level would be here. So we know exactly where Ethereum Classic would head to or stop to. So it seems $42.32 is a resistance that was set up back in October of 2022. But ultimately in the past 140 days, you have to zoom out and look at how the chart is looking and it is looking phenomenal, up 191% in that amount of time. So I believe we're going to continue to increase as this year is going to be incredibly bullish. So there you have it for a quick little update. If you guys enjoyed it, be sure to smash the like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys on the next update. See ya.